Welcome to the Daily DLP. I'm your host, Ash Thompson, and today I'll be going over some of the key points of the Los Angeles Chargers offense. Let's get it on. Kellen Moore is a name that Lions fans over a certain age will remember well because he was the noodle-armed backup quarterback out of Boise State that 97-1 callers insisted was better than Matthew Stafford and should get a shot at the starting job from 2012 to 2014. Well, in 2015, he did get a chance to play, starting two games for the Dallas Cowboys and throwing six interceptions in those two starts. A couple years later, he decided this playing thing just wasn't going to work for him, so he should transition into coaching. And he may have had a noodle arm, but he was one of those guys who immediately became like having another quarterback coach in the room. So he went directly from third string practice squad quarterback to quarterback coach of the Dallas Cowboys in one offseason. And one year later, he became the Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator under Jason Garrett. Now, after a single season under Jason Garrett, who got fired... Moore was kept on as offensive coordinator by Mike McCarthy, which was undoubtedly part of the interview process in Dallas. That's how much Jerry Jones loved this guy at that point. He was thinking this was the next head coach of his team. It's probably why McCarthy got the job is because he was willing to let basically the owner choose his offensive coordinator. Uh, McCarthy basically scapegoated Moore at every opportunity or so the scuttlebutt goes. Uh, Moore stuck around in Dallas until this season when he came over to Los Angeles to quote-unquote save Justin Herbert from Joe Lombardi, who held Herbert back to the point that Herbert was only able to muster 63 touchdown passes in his two seasons under Joe Lombardi. Just like Lombardi's holding Russell Wilson back as the offensive coordinator of the Broncos this year. What's that? Wilson's on pace for 34 touchdown passes this year and only about eight interceptions on that team. I thought someone told me he was cooked after one bad season under a one and done head coach that is now the offensive coordinator of the worst offense in the NFL, the New York Giants. That's what I thought I heard anyway, Uh, but back to the Chargers. Herbert's on his way to smashing all their franchise records with this new offensive coordinator, right? Wait, no? Hold on. Under Moore, Herbert is set to have his worst season as a starter? The offense is stagnating? Am I speaking in a way that creates a narrative? Of course I am. Their starting wide receivers, Mike Williams and Josh Palmer, are both on injured reserve right now, which leaves the Chargers with just Keenan Allen and rookie Quinton Johnston, who those are the only two guys on the team that have basically more of their wide receivers. I should say that have more than 10 targets this year. Uh, Johnston's a guy I didn't like in this last draft because he has that guy with a big body who plays like he has a small body combo that just doesn't ever really seem to translate very well in the NFL. Like if you're a big guy and you're not a physical guy, that is generally not going to play well in the NFL uh, because the little guys in the NFL are more athletic than you and the big guys are stronger than you. Uh, At tight end, they do have Gerald Everett, who just... I felt like he should be 35 years old, but he's not. Just seems like he's been around forever on some team or another. Probably always the Chargers. (laughs) Uh Also, Donald Parham. Uh... But those guys are both getting eight yards per reception. They're basically red zone and check down targets. Like they've got six TDs between them, but they're basically just, they don't really matter inside like between the twenties. The offensive personnel basically has a fatal flaw. And that's that every one I just mentioned is a possession receiver. Like Keenan Allen has 10,000 yards in the NFL, uh, but he is not, stretching fields or or keeping defenses honest in that way. And the first thing the Lions need to do is take care of Allen on each and every single play. Like he is going to get his catches 
It is almost inevitable, but the hole in his game is that he's always been incredibly easy to tackle. Let's throw some numbers on that. In the last three and a half seasons, Keenan Allen has broken a tackle once every 47.7 receptions. So basically like two a year broken tackles. So key one to limiting the Chargers offense is being on Allen immediately when he catches the ball. Like he does average four yards after the catch. That's not a particularly huge part of his game, but he's going to get his receptions because somebody has to, and they are going to scheme to get him open short because they have to throw to somebody. He's averaged 7.8 yards at the point of the catch this season. If the Lions can limit him to less than 10 yards per reception, it is going to be a very good day. Like I would expect a lot of rolling the free safety to Allen's side and having a quarter on him play extremely aggressive at the line. The Chargers offense does everything they can to get Allen open deep, but it's all slow developing plays. Uh, they'll put Kirby Joseph into conflict. And then the Lions need to have another safety back there to take the second deep guy off of Kirby Joseph's hands. They've been running basically Quinn Johnston and Allen on the same side of the play with Johnston on the outside of the formation and run, running him in a pattern that takes him deep in the middle very quickly while Allen runs a slower developing deep pattern along the sideline, like just an out and up or something like that that gets him going down the sideline, hopefully without a safety, hopefully behind the corner. <laughs> the Lions need tight coverage from the corner on that side, which is basically going to be Brian Branch in this case, if that's the particular combination that they're running. Because if there's any gap in that coverage, Allen's going to find it, and Justin Herbert will get the ball there. He's been favoring Allen over other receivers that are open in better spots on a given play all season between the 20s. Austin Eckler is the other dangerous weapon on the Chargers offense, but he's been more effective as a receiver than a runner this year. The Chargers feature back, quote unquote, is getting 3.6 yards per carry on the ground. That's his career low by, by a not small margin. Uh, and it includes a 1.9 yard per carry day against Chicago, where they still fed him the ball more than 10 times. Eckler's never really been that like, Derrick Henry, 250 carries, leading the NFL in rushing yardage kind of guy, but for some reason, Kellen Moore has decided to pound the rock inside with Eckler, which might be part of why he missed three games so far this year. Basically, well, I mean, they do it with Josh Kelly too. Well, he's just been more effective. The Lions linebackers and interior defensive line need to show up in this game uh, because the Chargers are going to run the ball in the middle. Uh, until the Lions prove that they can't, and then they're probably still going to keep doing it after that. They're not doing anything particularly inventive or creative with it. They're just lining up and hoping that their guys win the rep. No Chargers running back has a success rate over 47%. This is a weakness in their offense, and the Lions need to get the Chargers offense behind the sticks as often as possible by stopping the run on early downs. Like, Eckler has 11 yards per reception. He's the Chargers' kind of safety blanket. He's been making people miss and getting extra yards. So, the linebackers who are in coverage against Mr. Eckler need to limit those yards after the catch. They need to get him down. His yak on third down is backbreaking. A check down that gets a first down is just demoralizing to a defense. Those can't happen this week. Anzalone, Burns, Campbell need to keep the short passes to running backs short of the sticks. And of course, there is really only one thing that actually matters when you're talking about the Chargers offense as much as I gotta come up with more than one thing to talk about because that there's I can't spend 15 minutes on this one thing. Justin Herbert. Uh, he's a guy who can complete any throw at any time from any arm angle available. His velocity on quick little snap throws in the face of pressure is ludicrous. Like he throws a ball where his arm barely moves harder than Jared Goff throws with a full windup. 
Like that just is what it is. This guy's arm is ludicrous on the NFL scale. He has an arm that is difficult to match. Like on that one specific thing, I would say he does that significantly better than Patrick Mahomes. Now Mahomes has better everything else, uh, <laughs> but on that one thing, Herbert's the best in the NFL at that specific task. And the thing with Herbert is like, if you want to beat him, you have to get pressure on him. But if you try to do it with blitzes, they have to get there and they have to get there fast, like slow developing loops and second effort wins, which is what the lions have been using for their terrible pass rush. That's given average production uh, because of the blitzing eventually working. Uh, you can't do that to Justin Herbert. The Vikings tried it. They blitzed him on 42 out of 49 dropbacks. So that's an almost 80% blitz rate, which is just psychotic. He went 40 for 47 for 405 yards and three touchdowns. And if he does that on Sunday, the Lions are probably not going to win this game. However, Steve Spagnuolo and the Chiefs shut the Chargers down with pressure in the second half of their game with a significantly more healthy Chargers offense to deal with. The difference is the Chiefs got there quickly and the Vikings did not. If you're going to blitz Herbert, and the Lions are going to do that, you have to get there quickly. Like the Lions have just shown no ability to create pressure with a four-man rush. They just can't do it. Hutch and Ali McNeil have done a pretty good job creating pressure in the passing game. John Kaminsky has pushed the pocket, but not really finished the job. Other than that, the Lions guys are pretty much persona non grata in terms of the pass rush. The Lions are going to have to blitz, because without pressure, Herbert will just carve you up. But the blitzes have to get there. They have to get there fast. Herbert finds the open guy when he has the chance to stand there, or when he can see the pressure developing. If nobody's open... Then he'll find somewhere to run. Uh, you need to stop that too, but it can't be the main thing with Justin Herbert. They can't do what they tried to do against Lamar Jackson, where they just don't pressure him and make him beat him with his arm, make, make him beat them with his arm, because he will, and it will be that kind of game if they try to do that again. So hopefully they've learned that lesson and they're going to move on to something different. So while the Lions' pressure for get it or Lions' technique for getting pressure doesn't really line up well. With what the Chargers offense does, the Lions secondary personnel does line up well with what the Chargers have done to deal with the blitzes that don't get there. They love the bubble screen. And the Lions secondary have eaten those like they were leftover Halloween candy in a childless home this year. The Lions safeties are all good tacklers like Tracy Walker, Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph. They all bring the wood to the shed when dealing with opponents short passing games. Uh, and frankly, so has Ifiatu from Elephant Wu this year when he's been forced into action. Jerry Jacobs and Cam Sutton have had some issues in terms of their tackling, but that's mostly been in the run game. Uh, but if they're not bringing their guy down, that could be problematic on those downs where Herbert gets the ball out quickly to avoid blitzes. All in, as far as the offense goes from the Chargers, I don't really like this stylistic matchup with the Lions, but because they're down so many receivers, the Lions may not be all that challenged on Sunday. Of course, if this is the week a receiver chooses to step up and give the Chargers a third receiving option, this could be a problematic matchup for the Lions. So, I'm just going to recap quickly what I think you're going to see from the Chargers on Sunday. They'll pound the rock, up the gut, whether it's working or not. They will respond to blitzes with bubble screens and quick throws to the tight end. That's the other thing they do on that. Basically, the Lions safeties and linebackers need to get there and eat those. If the Lions blitz, it needs to get there quickly or they're going to have a bad time. Herbert will throw to Keenan Allen early and often, whether he's the best option or not on any given play because he trusts Allen doesn't trust his other wide receivers. So the Lions need to limit Keenan Allen by playing him tight with over-the-top help. The Lions would be, would be best served using multiple deep safeties. That's cover two, cover four, yada, 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 yada. To kind of handle what the Chargers do to try to spring Allen open deep. Because if they can get him deep, that's extremely problematic for the Lions defense. He's not fast. If he's getting open deep, 
all kinds of things open up that we just don't want to deal with. And that's what I think. So take it for what it's worth. Tomorrow we'll talk about the Chargers defense. Have a great day.